Welcome back to Bitcoin Stuff! This episode is on why mechanical models don't work. And by mechanical models, what I mean is we're treating the market as if it is a, like a physical process where we look at it and we take measurements, then we have rules that say how it's going to look in the future and we use that to make lots of money! That doesn't work. And the reason that I'm doing this video is I got into arguments with some people about my last video about why you don't want to be a trader because they told me they can use the Kelly criterion to be a great trader and I'm ignorant because I don't know what the Kelly criterion is okay so I've included a link to a derivation of the Kelly criterion below but basically the idea is you have a certain uh, you have a bet with a certain probability of success and certain winnings if 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 it's successful, the idea is you figure out what is the optimal fraction of your net worth which maximizes your returns over time. And remember in my last video I said that focusing on maximizing your returns is a trap because that, that, that means you take on more risk that you don't know about. Okay, So these traders are doomed. Okay. Traders, if you think the, the Kelly Criterion is going to protect you, you're doomed. And I'm going to explain why. Here's the thing about a model. Okay, Every model is limited and it has effects that are left out. Just, well, I mean, if we were talking about orbital mechanics, we would say we can get almost everything if we just use Newtonian physics. If we need to get mercury really accurate then we need Einsteinian gravity so we have a, a simpler model and then we have a more complicated model that gives us some some subtle some subtle effects that the first model does not and if we wanted to be really accurate then we would have to use some kind of quantum gravity model that uh, you know isn't fully formed yet right but the point is in physics Generally speaking, we can order the effects as to which are small and which are big. Okay, you cannot do this in the market. Okay, any model always leaves stuff out, and there is no consistent way to say what is big and what is little because people learn, people learn new behaviors over time. So, an effect that's small now can result in lots of people learning how to take advantage of it then it becomes big and if lots of people are using the same model and they are all treating the same effects as unimportant and small that means other people can exploit them okay there is one good kind of model and that's the one that you invented and never told anybody but if it's not a secret that, that means it's just not not as good um, in in the market it's it's like the water is constantly going up right because every time a, an idea gets out eventually everybody has it and then in order to float you need you need the new idea it's it's like how in Alice in Wonderland the, the you you have to run well through the looking glass you have to run just to stay where you are, right? In the market, you have to keep getting new ideas just to stay afloat. And the only good ideas are the, the ones that not everybody has. There, there, is no, there is no absolutely good idea. There are, only, there are only ideas that not enough people know yet, okay? In the market, people are constantly pushing risk onto other people. And you can't stop and control this process because there isn't agreement about what is risky. So I could be saying, oh, here, have some of this risk. Yeah, if you want it, you can have it. And you could be like, oh, well, I don't see any risk. This looks great. I'll take it. I love it. Um, or <laughs> this happens a lot, too. You, you could be someone who is pushing risk on other people and you don't know it. You think that you're pushing something nice on other people. You think you're being nice. And all of society thinks you're being nice too. You're thinking, oh, I'm so nice. Look at all of this nice stuff I'm pushing on other people. 
That that happens all the time. So, I mean, the entire market is uh, is is crazy and deceptive. Okay, so these kinds of things they're not uh, not unusual. Now, um, so so if you have a mechanical model of the market, and it is initially successful, that means more people are going to learn to adopt it. And that means that more people are treating the same effects as if they are unimportant and not risky. And that means other people can benefit more and more by pushing risk onto the people using the model. Because the people using the model, they're saying to them, you know, they're saying, oh, well, I don't see any risk here. These things, I, they're not in my model, so I'm not, I don't care. I'm not reacting to them at all, right? That's, that's what happens when you use a model. Now, um, so you can kind of think of a stock market high, a cycle this way, right? So if there's a particular behavior that uh, isn't, isn't being checked, very well at first, like buying extra houses and uh, getting more mortgages. You know, lots of people can do this for a while and not notice that, that other people are pushing risk onto them, okay? But then, it, eventually it doesn't work anymore. Eventually the, the, the risks uh, become realized, and that's when, when the crash happens. So. Now, the Kelly criterion. Here's the problem with the Kelly criterion. You're supposed to know what the probability of success is. That is crazy. That is crazy. That's why you're doomed, okay? The only way, you, I mean, you can't a priori know what, what the probability of success of something is, right? The only way that you could guess would be is if you you know, measured back in time, you looked at similar events in the past, and you said when the market was similar to how it is now, it went up with a certain probability and down with a certain, well, a certain fraction of the time, not probability. You don't know the real probability. So, but if, if other people are using your model, they're all going to be thinking about the present in the same way okay and other people who are not using the model can push risk onto them so the real probability is not is not what it looks like if you look at the past because everybody is behaving differently now okay so eventually eventually new new events that don't look like the past happen and that's that's when you realize that you've been taking on risk that you you didn't know about or at least i hope you realize that because that should teach you not to be a trader but uh you know maybe you won't learn anyway to me traders are like mayflies okay and that's what i don't want people to be 